Hey there, we are live at Midtown Comics Grand Central. It is new comic book day. Happy Wednesday to you. It is, of course, the most beautiful day of the week. There's hundreds of new release books that have come out, and we're going to take a walk down, and we're going to talk about a lot of these great books. There's a lot of cool stuff. But before we do that, I just want to give a shout-out. We're having a warehouse sale this Saturday. It is going to be huge. It is our last blowout warehouse sale. You guys should come by to our warehouse at Long Island City. You can find the details on our Facebook page. It's in our cover photo, so you can't miss it. It's going to be a ton of fun, and we're going to have huge savings across the board. we got to get rid of everything in there, and hopefully you guys can help us out. And tomorrow, we're going to be doing a signing with Declan Shalvey. Of course, Declan Shalvey is a writer and extra artist extraordinaire, and he's going to be signing Deadpool vs. Old Man Logan number one, which comes out this week. We'll talk about it in a minute, and we are very excited to have him here. So let's walk down this wall. Let's talk about some amazing books. Starting us off, we've got the brand new issue of X-Men Gold, Mojo Worldwide, Part 3. Some crazy stuff from Mark Guggenheim and uh, Mark Lamming. Very fun, very cool, and of course you see the Master of Magnetism is appearing, but you know it's Mojo. You know there's some crazy stuff going on, and not everything is as it seems. Lots of fun. We also have the brand new issue of Generation X from Christina Strain. Some very cool stuff going on here. Great series, and I'm loving these Terry Dodson covers. We also have Venom, Lethal Protector, a very cool storyline that has just begun. And you see right here on the cover, that is Craven the Hunter. That's right, Craven the Hunter facing off against Venom. Very cool idea, and I'm very excited to see what they pull out for the storyline. I'm sure it's going to be absolutely crazy. Now we hit some of our really cool, exciting releases for the week with Mighty Thor issue number 700. You'll see right here we've got the previews exclusive cover. We've got the trading card cover, the Chip Zarsky cover. That's really funny. I really like that one a lot. The lenticular and the regular cover from Russell Dodderman. Of course, this is issue number 700 of Thor, and it is a huge gateway cover i don't even have to open it because we got two copies very cool stuff here it is an oversized edition it's 5.99 for a ton a ton i mean this thing is like three times the size of any other book on the stands this week very cool stuff jason aaron's been on the book for years and having a great time and this storyline is called the death of the mighty thor and that's kind of terrifying because if you're reading the thor book and then thor dies what do you do well, you got to read and find out some very exciting stuff here. Now we're going to bump up, though, and talk about some of the cool collections that are coming out this week. First off, we've got Volume 4 of Spider-Gwen Predators from Jason Latour and Robbie, Rodi Re Re Robbie Rodriguez. Some very fun stuff here. We also have Thor Ragnaroks, plural, not singular, telling some classic Thor adventures, as well as Thor Gods and Deviants. Now, this collects a couple different books. It's got Astonishing Thor in it. It's got Thor for Asgard. And it's got the Loki miniseries, which is awesome. Read the Loki miniseries. Buy this collection. That mini is awesome. Masad Rivik does the art. Very cool stuff here. We also have the first trade paperback collection of Jean Grey by Dennis Hopeless and Victor Ibanez. Some very cool stuff here. And I love the spines on these new X-Men books. Those make me really happy. Those are just pretty. Then we have Grounded from Guardians of the Galaxy. This is the conclusion of Brian Michael Bendis' years-long reign on the title. Some cool stuff here. We also have Black Panther and the crew from Ta-Nehisi Coates. Very cool series. Six issues. You don't need to have read stuff before it. And there's plenty to read after if you are so inclined because Ta-Nehisi Coates is doing a great job on all things Black Panther. We also have America. Volume 1, The Life and Times of America Chavez, and there's even a special edition of it. That's right, the rare instance of multiple covers on the same trade paperback collection. Gabby Rivera's been having a lot of fun. Joe Quinones, Michael Villabobos, or Ramon Villabobos, sorry, and a ton of really fantastic artists on it. Ming Doyle jumps in for some of it. Stacey Lee, great stuff, really love it. Then we have Baking with Kafka, a cool graphic novel, as well as Bloodshot Reborn, Volume 2 hardcover from Jeff Lemire, who's been doing a great job on the title for a while now. Now we go back to the new releases, and we got a double dose of Star Wars here. We've got Captain Phasma number 4 
from Kelly Thompson. And then we have Charles Sewell's Poe Dameron, issue number 20. Two great books. If you are hyped like I am for Star Wars The Last Jedi, you got to read the books that are explaining everything in this new era of Star Wars that's really unexplored. These books have an open playground and lots of cool stuff going on, especially check out Phasma if you want to see what happens right after the end of Force Awakens. Now, continuing down, we've got Peter Parker, the spectacular Spider-Man, issue number five from Chip Zardesky. Very cool series. Some great art from Adam Kubert as well. And then we have Spider-Gwen, issue number 25, a wealth of different covers. Very cool stuff here. Jason Latour, Robbie Rodriguez, and Gwenum. That's right. That only makes sense for the Venom symbiote to play a part in the life of our lovely Gwen Stacy and it's one a super cool design on this cover that is a really cool way to incorporate venom into the gwen stacy design but also very curious to see what it does because we know how it tore apart peter's life we got to see what it's going to do to gwen as well now continuing down we've got the latest issue of secret warriors from matthew rosenberg very cool stuff here quake facing off with deadpool because deadpool seemed to have ticked off everybody during secret empire and quake more than most because he, if you were reading Deadpool, he killed somebody very close to Quake. And uh, I won't tell you who, but she's got a really good reason to be angry. Now, continuing down, we've got the brand new issue of Monsters Unleashed. And, of course, it's part of Marvel Legacy. So it's got a very cool lenticular edition. And I love this lenticular because you can see right there, Fantastic Four, number one, one of the most iconic covers in the history of comics one of the most fundamental books for the history of Marvel. Very cool stuff here. And then we've got Luke Cage, and this is a near and dear to my heart series. Very fun stuff here. David Walker's been doing a great job, and I love the lenticular on this because Luke Cage Hero for Hire number one is a great cover, great series, and I'm loving how they are renumbering back to the original numbers with 166. Very cool stuff. Now, continuing down, we do have the brand new issue of Invincible Iron Man. And who's that on the cover? That's the man himself, Tony Stark, bursting out of the grave. Of course, Tony had some crazy things going on in Civil War II. And now the search for Tony Stark begins as both Victor Von Doom and Riri Williams try to embark on a journey to figure out what's going on with the once and former Iron Man. Some cool stuff here. Definitely check it out. Brian Michael Bendis and Stefano Caselli have been doing a great job on this title. Bendis has been on it for a couple years now, and he really has an affinity for the character. Some great stuff. Now, as we continue down, we also have Greg Pak on Incredible Hulk with issue 709. It's Greg Pak, it's Greg Land, and it's just awesome. That lenticular, this is one of my favorite lenticular covers by far. I actually show you the inside jacket to give you a clean... Oop, that was the first page. To give you a clean look at the art as well from Mike Diodato on the uh, variant there. Great stuff. Great series. Very cool. Greg Land is taking him back to Planet Hulk, one of the most iconic Hulk stories of all time. And Greg himself was the one to write it. So very cool to see him returning to his playground. Now moving down, we've got all new Guardians of the Galaxy. Who will be the new member of the Guardians of the Galaxy? And we've got some weird candidates here. I mean, Doctor Strange, Deadpool, Cable, Man-Thing. I mean, I'm kind of hoping for Man-Thing myself because he was really cool in Thunderbolts back in the win. But we'll see. Very cool stuff here. Gary Dugan's been having a lot of fun. We also have the brand new issue of Doctor Strange from John Barber. Very cool. Love this cover. Some great stuff going on here. Now, we have the blank cover for last week's Despicable Deadpool. So if you missed out, it's right here. It's blank. It's there for you. God knows, you know, people love the blank covers, and especially for Deadpool. But there's also the blank for Deadpool vs. Old Man Logan, which we have right here. A wealth of different covers and an amazing book. If you guys haven't checked it out yet, it is the two people that are probably going to be the last guys standing in a fight, Deadpool and Old Man Logan. They're the two guys with the craziest healing factors in the world. What do they do when they face off head-to-head? -head? Very fun, and I've seen these pages online quite a bit, and I think that they're absolutely hilarious. But the opening of this book, where it's just Wolverine, or I guess Old Man Logan, uh, and Deadpool running and running <laughs> from the carnage that ensues, 
I think that's hilarious, and I think it's great. Mike Henderson is doing a really good job on the art for this book. Very fun stuff here. And, of course, like I said before, we're going to have Declan himself visiting us, joining us for a signing tomorrow at Midtown Comics downtown at 6 o'clock. So come by and meet the master wordsmith and also doing the covers. Some very good, very great talent. Very cool. Now, as we continue down, we've got champions issue number 13 continuing the world's collide storyline from avengers you see the avengers you see the champions you see the divide you know they've got problems with one another a lot of them used to be avengers some very cool stuff here of course the lenticular cover does show the presence of the high evolutionary uh very cool stuff here sorry i just want to cut in real quick this is one of my favorite covers of all time i actually put up a facebook post about this like two weeks ago but Champions, Avengers. This is a cover of Avengers Annual number 17, which was the conclusion of the Evolutionary War from back in 1988. And what's cool about this is that it was Captain America and a ragtag group of reservists trying to save the world, and now it's the Avengers and the champs trying to do the same thing from the Evolutionary. Each member who's, lined, who's here is lined up to almost exactly themselves. Falcon is Falcon, Hercules is Hercules, and it's just worked out really, really cool that way. I love how, I love how they designed that, and I can, will stare at this all day. And it's a great storyline, too, if you're not picking it up. That's all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, we got, we got a, a quick blitz from Surge jumping in. Some very cool information, but he's completely right. It's absolutely incredible, and you should be checking out Champions. It's a great chance to get in on the ground level. Now we're going to bump up real quick before we continue, and we're going to talk about some of the cool collections this week. We've got the third volume of I Hate Fairyland from Scotty Young, a very fun series, as well as the mage being recollected from Matt Wagner. Then we have Rick Remender's Low for the first time in a super, super cool oversized hardcover edition. Remender's got a lot of great books, and they're, all, they're always putting these nice hardcovers because his books are always that good, you know? Then we continue down. We've got some Spawn for you. Very cool stuff here from Eric Larson and, of course, Todd McFarlane. Then we've got The Duck Avenger, Giant Days, a really fun book from Boom if you haven't checked it out. Really cool series. Uh, definitely, definitely really big fan of Giant Days. Very cool. Uh, we've got At War With War, seem, uh, seemingly self-aware there. Uh, the Ghost of Gaudi. Encyclopedia of Black Comics. Some really cool information here from Sheena Howard. Great book. Got a lot of really fantastic creators involved. Then we have the Scarecrow Princess. James Bond, the Black Box. Of course, I love this Union Jack cover. Very cool. We've got the first volume of Plastic, which is a really terrifying cover. Actually, like super creepy. Not sure how I feel about that. I'm a little scared. The Tea Dragon Society, which is on the complete other end of the spectrum. Looks very fun, very adorable. We've got Penny in the Wild West. And then we've got The Baker Street 4, Volume 3. A whole wealth of great books. Some really cool stuff here. Of course, trade paperbacks are kind of amazing. Now, as we continue, we've got Cable Issue 150. Congratulations, Cable. You have escaped the 90s and made it to the modern day with 150 issues of crazy stories and this one just might be the craziest of them all it's not the new mutants it's the newer mutants as cable who of course is a time traveler travels through time grabs a bunch of x-men from different points in the timeline and he rounds them all up together and he goes okay let's save the world very cool stuff here very fun and if you're a classic cable fan i'm a big cable guy i love the guy this is an absolute must for you it's got everything you could want from it very cool and of course i mean check out that cool cover check out just the first appearance cable homage very cool one of rob liefeld's finest covers now we continue down we've got the black panther prelude series from corona Pr pilgrim who does a number of these great books from marvel bringing uh viewers up to speed and then we hit valiant and valiant's got a couple great books this week including War Mother, and the latest issue of Faith in the Future Force, which is crazy. If you haven't read these books, they're absolutely crazy. Especially Faith in the Future Force, where they kill all these crazy characters, but it's time travel, so it's got crazy repercussions. Very cool stuff. Now, moving down, we've hit Image, and we've got Shirtless Bear Fighter. The conclusion, we've got a bunch of different covers. There's the nice one from Will Vendrell. There it is again. I meant to grab that one the jerome opena cover is super cool 
all of these covers are great and it's a great series if you haven't read shirtless bear fighter pick it up it's five issues of mayhem and fun and it's great and it's a shirtless bear fighter the entire pr pitch of the book is the title it's kind of great then we move down and we've got the brand new issue of savage dragon very canadian flair going on here as uh our hero makes his way up north and then we have the brand new issue of the realm with a couple different walking dead homage covers there and it's very cool it's very fun i'm actually a big sucker for this one the jeff lemire cover very cool new series and if you missed out on the first issue don't worry the second printing is right here so there you go one two one two easy immerse yourself in the world of realm very cool new series from image now we've got the brand new issue of Mage from Matt Wagner. So if you buy the trade, you like the trade, you buy the book, you check it out. Very fun, very cool. And then we have another brand new series from Image. We've got Maestros from Steve Scrooge and Dave Stewart. These covers are amazing. I love it. I love the art in this book. This book has some super cool art, really great detail. And I'm sorry, but like literally flip open to random page let's just look at this dude who's got a sunflower for a head that is an actual thing that you will read in this book crazy and the art is so sensational if you're not picking up maestros and you're into magic and all that crazy stuff you're missing out because it's really a surefire hit we also have the brand new issue of kill the minotaur very fun series as well as killer be killed we've got all the killing books right here so Kill or Be Killed is great. Of course, it's Ed Brubaker. It's Sean Phillips. It's If I say those two names, you know it's a good book. They are they have a countless wealth of amazing, amazing, amazing titles. And Brubaker and Phillips might just be one of my favorite creative teams to ever team up. Ever. Literally ever. We also have the brand new issue of Invincible. It is part 9 of 12 for the end of all things. The clock is ticking, and soon Invincible will be ending, but it's going out with a bang. Some crazy stuff going on here. You got to check it out. If you haven't been reading Invincible, do yourself a favor. Buy the trades, buy the hardcover, buy everything, because everybody I know who's ever read Invincible has plowed through it in like 30 seconds because it's so great. Now we've got the brand new issue of Ghost Station Zero, issue number three from Anthony Johnson, of course. This is from Codename Babushka very fun russian storyline very cool spy stuff and it's also got like one of the best names ever i mean codename babushka is kind of amazing i i love that name i'm i'm sold on the name alone then we have the brand new issue of generation gone from alice cott very cool series from image as well as the brand new issue of descender a couple different covers here jeff lemire and dustin wen really great stuff here rise of the robots Dustin Wen's art is so gorgeous. I mean, I genuinely just super love this guy and everything he does. His watercolor work is so cool, and it's such a great contrast for the high-concept sci-fi in the book. You're missing out if you're not reading it. Check it out. It's worth it, I swear. Then we have the brand-new issue of Curse Words from Charles Sewell and Ryan Brown. Very cool book. Show off a couple of these different covers here. Curse Words is crazy, like straight up crazy. It's great. Read it. It's crazy. Then we have the brand new issue of the triple feature for Bitch Planet. If you want some cool side stories set in the world of the hit series, you got to check it out. Now we have here something that is very special. The signed copies of Angelic. Of course, Asperger and Casper Wingard joined us last week to sign some books and talk about the series. If you guys haven't read Angelic, you can watch our video from last week where they talk about it for like 15 minutes about what is so amazing about the series. And issue two of it is coming out next week. So now is the chance to get in on issue number one and two comes out next week. And it's signed. Gotta love signed books. Now moving down, we hit IDW with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Universe issue number 15 loving that cover very cool stuff here going on and tmnt universe you guys hear me say it all the time it's the longest running title for tmnt this series is the longest run on teenage mutant ninja turtles this is of course one of the side books so it's easier to jump into very fun stuff here now we have a couple of hasbro heroes coming out 
We've got Transformers Lost Light issue number 10, as well as Rom versus the Transformers in Shining Armor. Some very cool stuff has been going on here. If you're a Hasbro fanatic, you got to check it out. We also have the brand new series Kid Lobotomy. Very cool, very engaging story, very interesting and different from what you'd normally expect to see. It's called Kid Lobotomy. You know something crazy is going to go on. We also have the brand new issue of The Infinite Loop, Nothing But The Truth, issue number two, some cool stuff here, and Half Past Danger 2, issue number two, of course a sequel to the original Half Past Danger. And then to close off IDW, we've got a double dose of First Strike with Optimus Prime and ROM. Of course, it is going on in all of the Hasbro books. Some fun stuff here. If you're a Hasbro fanatic, like I said before, you got to check out these books. It really is a great way to relive your childhood in a modern day sense. And it's great because the comics are just so good. IDW has done a great job with all things Hasbro. So we've got some great collections we're going to talk about here. We've got Tattoos. Very cool collection from IDW. We've got Savage Season, another great hit. And then we've got the Deviations collection. Some really cool stuff here. It's got Judge Dredd. It's got My Little Pony. When those two things are in the same book, you know it's going to be weird. We also have Darkness Visible. Very cool series. And then we have Cutter, which, I mean, the name alone, you know it's going to get dark. Then as we continue, we've got Behind You, a very cool graphic novel collection. It's got a bunch of one-shot horror stories, and Joe Hill is doing the introduction on it, and you know that he knows horror very well. Then we've got Sebastian O, oh, the mystery play by Grant Morrison. It's Grant Morrison. That's awesome. You know it's going to be good. And we have the hardcover edition of Suicide Squad from DC Rebirth. If you're not reading Suicide Squad, you're missing out on one of the, my favorite runs of the title. Really enjoying what they're doing with it. This has what? It's got the first eight issues, the one shots. It's got the rebirth. It's got a lot, and it's very cool and very reasonably priced. What is it? 35 bucks for a lot of stuff that would have cost you a lot more. Very cool. Check it out. Then we have the Wonder Woman and Bionic Woman crossover collection. Of course, Wonder Woman 77 and the Bionic Woman, two of the most iconic uh, female heroes of yesteryear. Very cool stuff here. Then we've got the Harley Quinn, a rogues gallery. I love the play on words here. It's a nice little art book. If you're a fan of Harley Quinn, check out all the cool covers. And then we have Grayson, the super spy omnibus. Very, very awesome series. If you missed out on Grayson, you're missing out on one of the coolest things that's ever happened in Nightwing. It's Tim Seeley, it's Tom King, and Mikkel Janin. And you know, a couple of those names are still working in the Bat Books. Actually, they all are doing some really cool stuff. And this is one of the coolest runs on, like, the character of Dick Grayson I've ever read. Like, genuinely speaking, I love this stuff. And Mikkel Jennings' art cannot speak highly enough of it. Then we continue down. We've got Aces High, the EC Archives. And then we've got Tomb Raider Volume 3. Very cool stuff here from Dark Horse. We've got Rashomon from Victor Santos. Very cool. And we have Mr. Higgins Comes Home from Mike Mignola. Mike Mignola. He knows a thing or two about comics, of course, the wonderful mind behind uh, Hellboy. And then we have, to close us off, another Magnola hit with Baltimore, the Red Kingdom. Very cool stuff here. Very good time to be a comic book fan. I mean, really, some great stuff. Now we go and we hit Vertigo, and just right off the bat, we've got Astro City. And if this isn't the cutest cover you'll see all week, I don't know what's wrong with you, because that's a superhero corgi. And... I you have to be crazy to tell me that there's anything in this world that's cuter than a superhero corgi. You really do. That's great. That's fantastic. That makes me happy. As we move down, we've got Wonder Woman versus, well, not Wonder Woman versus Conan, although they are facing off on this cover. It's Wonder Woman Conan. It's Gail Simone. It's Aaron Lepresti. It's awesome. And in this storyline, it's been really crazy. Of course, Conan is trying to be a bit of a pacifist here. And that's uh, very contrary to uh, what you would expect for the character. So you know it's going to have bad things happen. Very cool story. We also have the first volume of The Wild Storm. It's flying off the shelves. Absolutely crazy. Very cool stuff here. If you haven't been checking out Wild Storm, you are missing out because it really is great. It's Warren Ellis. It's John Davis Hunt. And this is a collection that's got the first, what, six issues of it? Great price, great series. If you're not reading it, 
you are missing out because it really is great. You can see the Jim Lee cover here. Jim Lee, of course, is the mastermind behind the original Wild Storm, and it's great. And then if you like it, buy the new issue because it's great. Warren Ellis, John Davis Hunt, issue number eight of Wild Storm. Absolutely nuts book. Very cool stuff here. I'm really happy with the direction they've taken these characters. Now, as we continue down, we've got the brand new issue of Trinity with Trinity issue number 14. Some crazy stuff going on here. That doesn't look good for anybody. That that just that's a mouth coming out of your chest and, you know, makes me think of like alien and all these horrible things. And that can't be good for Superman. Then we have the brand new issue of Titans. And I want to show off a couple of the different covers here because I'm a big fan of the art of the lovely Dan Mora. And you can see it's Wally and Wally. That's right. Two Wests, one book, tons of action. Absolutely crazy. Check it out. As we continue down, we've got Imperious Lex Part 1 unfolding in Superman issue number 33. It's got Pete Tomasi, Patrick Gleason, and Doug Mankey, three of the coolest creators in the comic book world. And it's just look, let's look at this cover. Like, let's be real here. We've got Lex Luthor, we've got Superman, we've got what looks like Apocalypse or something behind them. Because you can see Granny Goodness and Steppenwolf, you know it's going to be crazy. Like, all of those things I just named are, like, top-tier things, and it's all in one story from top-tier talent. Gotta check it out. You're missing out if you're not reading Superman. Jump on right now. Part one. Easy jumping in point. Read it. It's amazing. Then as we continue, we've got the brand new issue of Super Sons with the Planet of the Capes storyline. This has been a lot of fun. Very cool. Pete Tomasi and Jorge Jimenez have been playing around with the kids and playing around with the Teen Titans as well. Lots of great stuff here. Now, as we continue, we've got the brand new issue of Nightwing from Tim Seeley, whose name you might recognize because I said about 30 seconds ago. He worked on Grayson. Now he's working on Nightwing. He's been on the guy for years, doing a great job. Moving on, we've got Mr. Miracles 1 and 2 being reprinted. If you're not rid of Mr. Miracle, then you're missing out because I'm saying it a whole bunch, but that's because this is this is really a top-tier book. This is like the book that's got all the acclaim. This is the book that's got all the buzz. This is the book that's flying off shelves. This is actually the third printing for issue number one already. That's crazy. It's already on a third printing because Tom King and Mitch Gerards are really making a modern masterpiece, and you gotta check it out. You really do, it's really fantastic. I can't speak highly enough about the book. It's great, and it's Tom King's one of the hottest writers in comics right now. Now, as we continue down, we've got the brand new issue of Justice League. Very cool stuff here. Brian Hitch has been having a lot of fun with Fernando Persarin on art. Show off that uh, cool Nick Bradshaw variant as well. And as we continue, we've got the brand new issue of Injustice 2 from Tom Taylor. Issue number 12. If you're an Injustice fan and you're enjoying all the new DLC characters, check out the comics because it's going to give you a whole bunch of ideas for characters that they should put in for the game, for the next installment, for everything. It's also just a good book. Now we've got the brand new issue of Harley Quinn. We've got the Vote Harley storyline continues. You can see very cute cover here with Red Tool as like his Secret Service and Poison Ivy. But honestly, this Frank Show cover is really great and perfect for Halloween because it makes her look like a witch and it's really cute and clever and I think that's fun. You know, sometimes you just want a cute, clever cover. Then we've got the brand new issue of Green Lanterns. Tim Seeley jumps on board as the new writer for the series. It's a great opportunity for you to jump on board this book. Very cool stuff here. And you'll see a couple different covers. You know that it's going to be crazy because the Green Lanterns book has been having a lot of fun. We also have the brand new issue of Green Arrow. The Trial of Two Cities unfolds. A couple different covers here. I love this one, the Mike Rell cover. Ben Percy has been doing a great job on the title. And now we get to see the repercussions of Oliver Queen running out on his own murder trial. And what's going to happen? Black Canary, can he, she save him in time? I hope so. Then we have Future Quest issue, or Future Quest Presents, pardon me, issue number three. A couple different covers here. Some very cool stuff from Jeff Parker and Ariel Olivetti. And then we've got Bombshells United issue number four. Loving that Terry Dodson cover. Showing, of course, Wonder Woman and the Wonder Girls. Very cool stuff here. I also just love seeing Cassie on a book cover because it doesn't happen too often these days. And I'm a sucker for her. Then we've got the brand new issue of Batwoman. Fear and Loathing continues. 
Check out that beautiful cover by Michael Cho. Some great stuff going on in this book. Marguerite Bennett has been having a blast with this character, with this title, and you should really check it out if you just want a fun and hard-hitting series. And it's got a Scarecrow in it. It's called Fear and Loathing for a reason, because it's got Scarecrow. Now, continuing down, we've got a reprint of Batman the Red Death, the first of the metal uh, tie-in issues that was dealing with these crazy characters. This is awesome. If you're a Flash fan like me and you get to see... It's Batman as the Flash, but like in this weird distorted thing, and you get to see Batman going on a rampage with all the weapons of all the rogues, and that makes me happy. And it's from the creative team of Flash, of Joshua Williamson and Carmine Diagenomenico. Some great stuff here. Now we've got Batman the Drowning. You see that very cool metallic cover. Dan Abnett delivers us his weird Aquaman counterpart in the Batman mythos. And, of course, you see that it's going to be totally crazy because Batman, it's not Batman this time, you know? It's not Bruce Wayne. Flip open to a random page, and it's clearly already quite dark. Very terrifying stuff here. Then we move over to Batman, and Batman proper is on issue number 33, The Rules of Engagement. A clever, clever title. I think that's a really cute title. Joelle Jones is now on art for this, and this is cool. This is Batman riding a horse, and that looks awesome. He's traveling across the Sahara Desert. Some crazy stuff going on here, and let's talk about this cover right here because we get an Olivier Coipel cover, and he hasn't done any DC art in like a decade, so... Very cool. You're going to want to grab that while you can because it's going to fly. Then we've got the brand new issue of Aquaman from Dan Abnett and Stepan Sedgwick. Very cool stuff here. That's the very nice Joshua Williamson cover. And there's Stepan himself. Very cool stuff. And then to round us off, we've got Dark Horse with Sherlock Frankenstein and the Legion of Evil. A spinoff from Black Hammer. A couple different covers here. Jeff Lemire and David Rubin. Tons of fun, and if you haven't checked out Black Hammer and you want to check out, maybe maybe Black Hammer is intimidating you for whatever reason. Check out this. It's a side story. It's called Sherlock Frankenstein and the Legion of Evil. That is a that's an amazing name. Sometimes I get sold on a name alone. That is the name that sells me on the book alone. That is great. Very cool stuff. And then we also end with Department H uh, from Matt Kent. Very cool book. Uh, also has one of my favorite typeface puns. Very cool stuff. I, I like that. I, I enjoy the pun of that title. But it's a big week. There's a lot of cool stuff. Uh, of course, we've got our master, uh, Declan Shalvey, signing tomorrow at Midtown Comics downtown. Going to be a lot of fun. 6 o'clock. Bring your books. Bring a smile. He'll be happy to see it. And then we have our signing on uh, Saturday. as Our signing. Our sale on Saturday. Our warehouse sale that is going to begin at 10 o'clock a.m. Get there early. Get inside. Get some deals. Save tons of money on a lot of the stuff that you'll see here in store you want to say you see it you think oh man that's really cool man if only there was a warehouse sale there is a warehouse sale it's going to be great we're going to have some bargains and we want to clear out the entire thing so come by and clean us out it's the one time i'll say clean us out please we don't want the stuff we want you to have it and we want you to have a lovely wednesday so thanks for watching and uh let us know what books you guys are checking out in the comments and we'll see you soon